Good morning YouTube, welcome to my news channel. Today we are the 21st of March and we're at the beginning of spring of course, the new season. Let's hope it will be warm because I'm tired of this winter cold that just keeps lingering in Belgium. So let's take a look at the sun. Um, we are in a solar wind stream flowing from this particular southern corona hole looking at the uh, solar wind we can see that yesterday um, at midnight there was a shock the initial impact of that solar wind uh, the magnetic field uh, strengthened so did the bz turning positive then all of a sudden it went negative it went negative and it did so in a major fashion this sparked uh, overall activity looking at the density we can see a spike and it's rather substantial actually the peak is like 60 protons a second and at that particular time the bz went negative uh, the solar wind speed started increasing and reached a peak um, just after the initial shock as you might guess uh, about that bz component suddenly turning negative there is actually an explanation for that and this is basically called, uh, I believe, the russell mcferrin effect. Basically, this means around March, uh, right around the spring and autumn, um, the planet is actually aligned in such a way that the solar wind arrives directly um, towards our planet at a certain angle. Whether, whereas in June and December, in summer and winter, is actually the total opposite uh, because there is an um, inclination in axis of 23 degrees at the height of uh, summer and winter so during um, the beginning especially of the spring and the autumn season the busy component uh, is likely to turn negative even uh, when there is minor space weather uh, conditions and in fact if we look at here um, that geomagnetic storm was sparked instantly uh, because its effect is heightened because of this McFerrin effect. So, um, I thought it was interesting to mention this. Looking at the KP index, now that we are talking about it, it went straight to a G2 level storm, then to a G1 level storm, and then it sort of hovers around the KP4, and I do believe this will subside over time. There is uh, another thing worth mentioning in this video, and that's a CME actually. Uh, before I show, let me, well, actually, let's take a look. So uh, it shows actually on the analyst spiral, that's a good thing. And it started uh, well, according to the analyst spiral. Yes, it actually happens yesterday. Um, at around 22 UTC and uh, this CME is not a direct hit uh, as you can see here is our planet um, stereo A however the satellite will get in its direct uh, line of fire as usual I might say uh, unlucky stereo A and as you can see we only get a glancing Low. And in fact, um, this glancing glow seems to impact our planet if we look closely. That's this little puff of A. Around midnight at um, Wednesday. So there it is. This is when it actually hits. Um, it will be interesting to see if we will actually still be in that Corona Hole Wednesday when this happens. This could uh, accelerate uh, or compress particles and create a co-rotating interaction region um, but we'll have to see when it actually happens because this is three days from now and we might actually exit that solar wind stream from that corona hole uh, while this happens uh, th this event in itself is not a major one 
this is really just a glancing blow. And if you look at the density, um, is isn't much about it. It's not really dense, but uh, if you look at the velocity over here, it will be pushing accelerated particles. And what I believe this might create a shock on impact. But we'll have to see uh, how this develops further. So looking at the auroras, when the um, original impact happened of this particular uh, solar wind stream from that corona hole, we saw a, an explosion of auroral activity. Um, it didn't last really long, but the auroras um, themselves were very beautiful at the height uh, of that impact. Yes, this is once again that CME um, that erupted on the 20th. So we see it's it's a bit a haloish CME, but um, oh, this is quite interesting. A beautiful glitch. <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh yes. So that's again that CME impact, um, but we will only get a glancing blow, and it will be from this particular part over here, because this will entirely miss uh, our planet. So I'm guessing stereo, stereo A is somewhere over here, and our planet is somewhere over there. Okay, um, looking at the magnetosphere simulations, we see indeed at the time being that um, there isn't much going on. There is a sustained uh, solar wind speed um, at around 600 kilometers a second. Density-wise, it is subsiding, as you can see. Um, the solar pressure actually isn't all that um, all that high because um, usually when it is compressed, it actually goes against this disk over here. But our planet is holding nicely uh, all that solar wind, so nothing major going on. Looking at the NASA um, simulations, actually, we can see the impact itself. And again, um, it pushed our magnetosphere almost to geosynchronous orbit. So this is the beginning of that event at midnight uh, of yesterday. Let's just go frame by frame to look what actually happened. So as you can see, it, this is the start actually of that compression. And it goes really close to geosynchronous orbit. But interestingly enough, um, the pressure isn't all that high uh, on the bow shock. This is actually noticeable. And this is again proof that our magnetosphere is actually weakening. I mean, it can be more uh, clearer than this particular situation. Um, in this event, you can clearly see uh, there's actually no reason at all for this particular, for the Bauschuk actually to come that close to geosynchronous orbit. Um, the pressure is not all that high at all, uh, except the initial shock, of course. But moving forwards, we can clearly see that it doesn't really recover. It stays uh, very close, relatively speaking. And this is proof of that weakening. You see, this is actually at the height of that, this over here. And um, this is really almost at geosynchronous orbit, so this is not a good thing. Uh, let's take a look at that other simulation to actually see uh, the bow shock itself. So this is the initial shock, as you can see. Oops, let's close that one. Um, and let's enlarge this. Right. Let's go back. So there it is. Immediately, you can see that it pushes uh, our bow shock and the magnetosphere gets compressed. This is absolutely normal. Um, this is the magnetic field of the solar wind itself, which is going to be all over the place. And let me look at the timestamp. This is when it actually gets close to geosynchronous orbit, when it gets really compressed. Mm, this is actually interesting. What's this? Mm, yes, if I have to personally guess, 
what this means is that we exit actually that initial shock and then it sort of normalizes after that. Lots of IMF uh, trailing in the magneto tail as well, as you can see. Um, with no major abnormalities this time. In fact, the um, let me go back again. The magnetosphere itself, interestingly enough, despite this shock, remained actually um, in good shape. It never deformed, so um, no major deformations when when no deformations happens this means actually that the solar wind was well uh, blocked by our planet defenses so no worries on that front and in fact when you look at the schumann resonance we see actually despite that heavy impact um minor disturbances that actually happened today but on the impact itself almost nothing this is again proof of that that our planet did what it was supposed to do so, looking at the earthquakes, and this is rather interesting. There was a seven pointer, this is normal, um, on impact of that, um, well, a few hours later on, but I'm definitely sure this is because of the impact of that solar wind stream. And it's a seven pointer in Japan. But interestingly enough, we see a lot of earthquake activity around this side of the ring of fire. And as usual, nothing over here. Nothing uh, in the San Andreas uh, fault. No major quakes in Alaska either. And this got me worried. As you can see, it is already spilling over because all this movement has to be compensated. And it has nowhere else to compensate directly other than this side of the ring of fire. Because you see, this is interconnected. It can either compensate over here or over there. But usually it doesn't really uh, compensate in this region so it spills over to Asia to Europe and this is actually worrisome because this might actually trigger other all the other uh, fault lines on this side of the ring of fire on the other side um, this is because here it is completely locked pressure is building up building up so and it continues to build up and at some point there's going to be a trigger either a big earthquake or major space weather event and finally this particular fault line the andreas fault line will give in and a major earthquake will happen and if i have to guess the magnitude it will be an eight or a nine magnitude earthquake so if you live in california um in this particular region let me just put um Yes, in the streets. Los Angeles, and I do believe. Um, what was that other? Yes, yeah, San Francisco, of course. These are the major places to look out for. Uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. But actually, the entire region of California is at risk. Um, so if you live in California or even around uh, this particular state, uh, have an earthquake plan. Don't panic, but prepare everything. Communications, um, generator, uh, medication, um, food, water, um, everything you can prepare in advance. Uh, and especially check um, your local authorities to see uh, who you can call when something happens like that and what you can do to protect your family. Because when this is going to happen, there will be casualties, lots of casualties, because this is a major earthquake just waiting to happen. And it will happen at some point. And I will always run until it actually happens. Because when it happens, uh, this is going to be a major event. And I might even add that this particular fault line runs all the way to Oklahoma. This means that um, when that major one happens, there is a chance that actually the fault line will tear all around in the United States until actually it reaches Oklahoma. So this is definitely one to watch out for. And also, of course, Alaska, because um, this side, uh, I believe, moves downwards and this side of the tectonic plate moves upwards. So a major earthquake here will definitely spill over to Alaska definitely and also in this region in Chile uh, and such.
So have an earthquake plan. Prepare yourself. Better be, better be prepared than be sorry. This is uh, uh, my advice to you if you live in that region. This brings us um, yes, to one final item. <laughs> Iceland. Uh, Iceland has been um, bursting with activity, whether it is earthquakes or volcanic activity. And I thought uh, it would be interesting to post actually webcams. I posted them on my website and you can find them in the web links. Let me just show you. So this is my website. If you just click web links and then you click, you go to geology. I believe, yes, geology blocks. It is the middle one where it says webcams, ice and volcanoes live. If you click on them, you actually come over here. And this is basically a webcams, live webcams of um, all the volcanic regions. And I believe this one is actually of interest uh, right now. Mm, yes, but there's a little bit of fun. Anyways, you can click on whichever you like and all these webcams are live. This one was actually <laughs> bursting with activity just moments ago, but uh, there's lots of mist. So there was one here, uh, lava erupting from this. But as you can see, there was too much mist in front of the camp. Let's click on this one over here. This is another region, another part. This also. So yeah, if you want to check them, feel free to do so. I will also leave uh, a link in the description box um, for those of you who are too lazy to actually go to my website and click on this particular link. Um, and this leaves us, oh yeah, uh, before I end the video, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the like button. Um, but most of all, subscribe to my channel because if you don't, you will miss any future content. Um, and this will make me really sad. Um, oh yeah, another thing, and this is in particular for my subscribers. Could you possibly check the title of the video and type it in in YouTube to see if it actually shows up in the suggestions? Because um, I saw something worrying that YouTube has like thousands of words uh, which trigger actually a shadow ban and it's actually very easy to get in such a shadow ban and i want to check if i'm not shadow banned myself who knows and with this we come to the end of the video and as usual we go to a fi philosophical quote and i believe it's number 26 yes better a polite um, refusal than a worthless promise so there you have it. Don't make worthless promises. Uh, only if you can actually keep it, then uh, you can actually make a promise. Uh, because a promise all makes always uh, makes you uh, makes you actually owe something to someone. So uh, if you can't keep that promise, you will be in trouble. So. This is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Again, if you did, hit the like button. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. And I guess we see each other next time. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, take care.